Spend the night at home Watching on our phone All those videos I don't feel alone Waiting for the day Hey everyone, and you're listening to The Dirty Nerdy Show, where we get down to the dirty details of your favorite artists. We have a special treat for you today. I'll be your host. I'm ASMR Shani, and with me today as co-host is the lovely and talented Griff. Say hi, Aww. Griff. Thanks. Hi, guys. <laughs> and together, we're going to be interviewing the one, the only, your main host, Christopher Not Walken. Hey, Chris. Mm-hmm. So how are you? <laughs> how are you feeling today? A little nervous? What up? No, I'm uh, petrified. Is a better word? Uh... <laughs> are we that What's scary? The... Yes. We must be. Yes, I am terrified. I've never been on this side before. And I, I was just going to ask what it's like being on the other side of the table. <laughs> it's so scary. I don't know what to do. I'm always in charge. And now I'm like, not. <laughs> now I'm like, not. <laughs> we don't have worry. control. Your hand through it. We promise. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead. Cause I am the nervous right now. You'll be fine. You'll do great. Everyone here, let's be honest, if they're listening, they already love you. So don't worry. As long as you just don't say anything that'll like ruin your life, you'll be fine. Uh, see, <laughs> no <laughs> pressure. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's the problem because I am known for saying things. No, I think you're going to be great. Um, Shannon, do you want to get started? Yeah. So what made you want to start a YouTube channel, Chris? Um. I was watching a lot of stuff like After Buzz TV and I I really liked the whole like going into like nerd culture and like examining like all of that and that's why it's called The Dirty Nerdy Show because I wanted to examine all of the things that I love like I love comic books and and like nerd movies and like Star Wars and Star Trek and all of that stuff. So it wasn't originally just ASMR. It, it was nothing to do with ASMR in the, in the beginning. It was me and my friend, Deanna Diamond. Shout out Deanna Diamond. And <laughs> we started Dirty Nerdy, and it, it, it was so bad. I had no idea what I was doing. I, <laughs> I um, made thumbnails on paint and... Hey, don't knock it. I still make thumbnails on paint. <laughs> <laughs> so do I every now and then. But like, it was, it was, it was not good. It was, it was really, really bad. And uh, I was trying these different segments out and and everything. And then ASMR kind of came later. How, so, uh, how did that get started? Uh, how did I get into the ASMR thing? Uh, well. I had always like listened to ASMR, especially. All right, this is gonna get deep, you guys, because I, I, I warned you. I warned you. <laughs> this is true. Right? <laughs> um, so, about five years ago, my aunt passed away. Now, my aunt was very important to me. She basically raised me, right? And she had a massive heart attack right in front of me, and she died. And um, I had started listening to ASMR a little bit like before then, but like afterwards, um, it, it, it was the only thing that would get me to sleep at night because like I would close my eyes and I would see, you know, just the most, like I would relive that night over and over again. And it was just awful. And ASMR got me through it. And um, how I got into doing content related to it was um, I, I, I watched, I think it was a Rhett and Link video. And um, I, uh, I saw that they were talking about ASMR and I was like, that's cool, but they didn't bother to talk to a single person who does it. And that really bothered right. me. Like, like it, it bothered me that, that no one... Everyone was like looking at this thing, like, "Hey, it's it's this new trend," but like, no one talked to the people who do it. And I was like, "I want to go to the source. I want to find out oh. what, what what they're thinking and 
what they're feeling and why they're doing this. And, and also, I wanted to let people know there's this thing that means a lot to me that helps me so much. And I wanted to be able to, you know, spread my story a little bit. So why the interviews, though? Did you want to make an ASMR channel yourself or you just really wanted to get to know these artists that other people were kind of not really interviewing or giving them the spotlight that they deserved? Well, my grandmother is in radio and um, I always wanted to do that. I always looked up to what she does and um, it, it, it always came natural to me. I, I, ever since I was a little kid, you know, in and out of the hospital, you know, I, I, I could talk to people. I could strike up a conversation with literally anybody. And, um, it just seemed like a more natural fit. Like I'm not very relaxing at all. I, uh, uh, I'm a loud cripple. Everyone knows this. <laughs> um, so it's just, it, it, it's, it's a more natural thing. And I always wanted to be on the radio. So it, it's, it's like that. So if ASMR does work for you, what would you say like the, your favorite trigger is that helps you like relax and everything? Oh, I think it changes, doesn't it? Like, um, <laughs> I think it's totally. for everyone. Um, it really depends on what's going on in your life at, at the time. Um, you know, and and I think the older you get, because I've been listening for a long time, so I think the older you get, the 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 more your taste sort of changes, as it does with like anything in life. Um, like I used to really be into like uh, tapping sounds and and stuff like that. And I used to really be into like back in the old days of ASMR when it was like still like called like the whisper community. I used to love videos where people would put a pillow behind the camera and that would be like a shoulder massage because um that does sound relaxing it, <laughs> i'm giving y'all ideas nuggets right here like, i mean i'm just getting tingles thinking about it so <laughs> like, i mean personal attention videos are like my nightmare but i like i understand <laughs> <laughs> whereas like tapping videos are my nightmare <laughs> yeah. And yet you still tap in your live streams. You're oh, so it's so cringy, but yes. <laughs> hey man, my, my, now my favorite is, is, is probably fluffy mic stuff. Anything with a fluffy mic. Oh yeah. That's relaxing. I totally agree. I'm all I mean, it. that's the beauty about ASMR though, right? We can all have different triggers that we like. So yeah. And I think, okay. For me, I have to look at everything through my experience. And my experience is that of a person in his early 30s with a physical disability, right? So for me, um, disability can be very isolating, very sort of like standoffish not not me being standoffish but like the world can be mm -hmm. standoffish and uh i think personal attention videos um they kind of help with that and that's one of the things that i wanted to to highlight with doing the show that's if you look at the um the, the description the about on the channel um, I really, it even says it in there. I really want to show other people with disabilities, you know, ASMR because it helps me. Like it helps boost that confidence. I've looked at studies where it says that like one of the leading causes of depression in the elderly and the disabled is lack of human touch. Like whether it be like hugs and like whatever you know like whatever you know but um yeah. stuff like that and um yeah it, it it it's simulated somewhat but it still gives you a thing to where you feel human and i think that's the important thing and i think that's the the key thing to take away from and i think people probably don't realize how you know you know, much that means to someone like me. 
Right. Yeah. Being like an ASM artist, it's so nice to get like comments from different people saying like, you know, you helped me through my anxiety attack or you helped me through PTSD and stuff like that. It's really nice knowing that you're connecting with your audience. So I think what you're doing here with like interviews and stuff like that, it's a way for them to feel even more connected to like their favorite artists and get to know them more intimately and more about them. So I think that what you've started doing here is really like, you know, really special, but is there like anything else that you wanted to branch out in or any like different genres or any kind of interviews, or did you want to stick to like ASMR? I've always been conversational and I'm not one of those people that's like, Oh, I'm only ever going to do ASMR interviews. Like that's, um, the show is called the dirty nerdy show. Right. So, like, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I just so happened to interview a lot of ASM artists, you know, um, but I've, I've been lucky. I've done other things. I've interviewed models. I've interviewed, um, Jill Jones. She used to work with Prince. Uh, and I would love to interview like musicians, actors, writers, uh, writers. You see what I did there? Hey, yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, 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 Griff. <laughs> Hey, uh, yeah, I like this side of the interview process. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah. Um, uh, for, for the audience, I'm a professional writer. <laughs> they know you've been on the show before. <laughs> that just means that just means your interviews. Now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyone who has a passion that they're extremely passionate about that they have a story anyone that has a story i'm down um i don't care about channel size i don't care about freaking clout I, I don't give a shit yeah that's what i like about you and your channel like i said you're just like you're helping people connect with their favorite artists and i think that's really special so i was wondering if you had like since you're really open to doing anything do you have like a dream interview that you'd really like to do uh in asmr or like anything any just anything dream interview go oh wow <laughs> dream interview wow yeah. could we do a living or dead or one living and then one living or dead yeah sure do what griff wants <laughs> all right. All right. uh dead prince without Ooh, that's a good one without yeah. a doubt prince he's one of the biggest influences in my life when i was growing up um i I've had 23 surgeries, so I spent a lot of time in hospitals. And uh, when I was a kid, all I had was like, you know, my comic books and my prints, like tapes at the time. And then it eventually became CDs. And uh, those got me through it. I, I remember being a little kid uh, going into surgery and I would be so scared. And the only thing that would calm me down when they would put me under anesthesia would be to put headphones on me and play Prince and it would keep me calm. And that's, yeah, that's great. That's, that's how they would, they would get me to go to sleep during surgeries. It's almost like Prince was your early signs of ASMR. Yeah. 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 Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> and then what about one uh, living interview? Living, I would say, um, that that's really difficult. I, I, I wanna, okay, th there's, there's so many, I think. <laughs> this is where we ask the tough questions, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> I think Patrick Stewart, um, because he's Picard and I'm a big Star Trek fan. Uh, that would be cool. Um. Or, or or Jerry Ryan because she played Seven of Nine and she had that outfit on and she was all thick and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There you go. What's oh. up? You can cut. He can cut that out. We'll be fine. Okay. What am I cutting out? Oh, uh, you, you got... cannot hear you for like thirty yeah. seconds. Oh, uh, it's okay. Uh, we still picked it up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh well, what did you say? What was? Let's start from your answer because we didn't hear anything. <laughs> Oh, Please, thank which, you. Which answer did you not hear? The living one. The living one. Oh, I said, uh, I said Patrick Stewart because I'm a big Trekkie, 
and then I changed it to Jerry Ryan because she played Seven of Nine on Star Trek, and she had that outfit, and she was looking all thick and stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm, I love Star Trek. I'm about to go look that up though because I can't think of who that is. I haven't watched it since I was like young. She's the one who wears like the the yes. spandex, basically. Right? Oh, I should have known. She she was on Voyager. Got it. Okay. And that was that's a Voyager I want to undertake. Oh my goodness! Leave it to Chris to make the interview actually dirty. Yeah. All right. Well, so that's been the Dirty Nerdy Show. We'll talk to you yeah. later. Bye. Yeah. This has been Shannon and Griff. Out. <laughs> oh, he's just he's just rolling through all slick into the DMs. Hey, you want yeah. Christopher not walking? You got him. <laughs> <laughs> he's not holding anything back. This is. They wanted to know you. They're knowing you at your purest form right now. <laughs> this is what you get in the discords. Exactly. This is this is unadulterated, unfiltered, uncensored, straight up the wheelchair bound hound with the crown. I should put that on a shirt, you guys. What the wheelchair bound hound. I, I would probably wear that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> the wheelchair bound hound with the crown, Christopher not walking. I'd wrap it. Yeah, for sure. I used to say that in interviews. I used to say that in an intro. And then I stopped because I, you know, I don't know. I, I forgot. I, I get very nervous before interviews. And, um, oh really? my God, I'm taking really? over. I'm I mean, <laughs> I do too. I typically just drink a huge glass of wine before I start. <laughs> I should have done that. Oh, it's a, take a shot right now. Then you're good. <laughs> I, I don't drink anymore two years sober. But, I'm just toke. Oh, congratulations. But I uh, I do other things. <laughs> I we we know. We are well aware. <laughs> I'm pretty sure everybody's well aware. I can smell the smoke from here. I don't <laughs> listen, I don't know what you're talking about. And look, I live in California. And Chris is the biggest stoner I've ever met. My favorite, my favorite recent memory is when Michigan approved the legalization of weed. And before I could do anything, I got a text message from Chris telling me that that happened. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's like he knew before I did. And I live like, here. He's like, cool, going to come visit you now. Yeah, he's like, oh, okay, so I'm on my way. <laughs> <laughs> I literally, so, did, I was like, I was like, Shannon, so check it out, right? Michigan, weed, legal. I'm on my way. <laughs> I was like, I have the bowl ready. See you in a few. <laughs> <laughs> so besides this one, Chris, because obviously we're having a great time, what was your favorite interview that you've ever done? Um. Okay. We, we've got to separate that question because you realize that if you don't say Shani, she's going to punch you down and murder you. I, I will kill you. Uh, I'm just kidding. How about besides, <laughs> how about besides any interview with me? <laughs> Cause I know I'm your favorite. <laughs> well, yeah, obviously you're my favorite. You're the only person that I've had. Like, I don't trust anyone ever. And I gave you the keys to my freaking kingdom. Like, Aww. <laughs> So that that answers that right there. But like to 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 give another answer that's not you. Um... <laughs> it makes me sound like I'm like so conceited. You're like holding a gun to his head. <laughs> <laughs> to give an answer that's not you. Uh, um, but it is you. Just it, kidding. Go ahead. It is you, but like it's not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, um, outside of ASMR, it would probably be Jill Jones. That was a big thing for me. Um, but inside the whole ASMR thing, I was very, very nervous when I interviewed Fribby. Um, yeah, that was a good one. Um, I I was I was and I haven't spoken to her in a really long time and I hope she's well. Like um but I was so nervous because at the time she was someone that I watched like 
I don't want to say religiously because that's kind of creepy, but like I would go to her videos a lot. Like that's, you know, like I was still in the thick of it from when my aunt had passed away. And um, so I would go to her videos like all the time and she, you know, just, just did it. And it wasn't even like the ear eating stuff that got to me. It was always like, she would do like these like singing videos and I loved those so much. And when we talked and um, got to know each other and she told her story and I thought it was just such powerful stuff. And she was like, I need to say this. And uh, yeah, it was one of the, one of the most, it was, it was difficult in that it was like emotionally draining um, because she had a lot to get out. But mm -hmm. um, it was also one of the most fulfilling interviews that I've ever done. So have you faced any like personal hurdles or anything that you had to overcome while doing these interviews? Um, uh, be more specific. Just, you know, when you were doing these, have you ever faced anything like besides being nervous or any kind of like obstacles or anything throughout this process, like maybe asking people to be in it or anything like that? What kind of obstacles and hurdles and stuff have you had to I mean, get over or? There are the ones that you already know about. Um, but like getting interviews isn't difficult, man. Either they... Either they say yes or they say no. I, I I'm not bothered either way. I like I hold no ill will towards anyone that's ever said no. Um, I I kind of get annoyed though when it's like a no answer. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I know I know what you mean. It's oh, like at yeah, least say yeah. no. <laughs> like at least say no. Like like the coolest no I ever got was from Gina Carla. And she was like, "No, I can't right now. I'm, I'm, I'm so busy. But, but thank you." And I really appreciated that. Like, just take just time. polite. Like, no, like, you know. I agree. No, I agree. I will. I don't like leaving people hanging. And when I was doing them for you for a hot minute, when you were out, I hated when people didn't respond. Like, I was like, I really don't care if you say no. <laughs> I just <laughs> am asking. <laughs> yeah, like it's not gonna like break my heart if you say no, but like you know. Just, well, I know you meant. <laughs> I know you mentioned radio. Is there any other profession if you would be doing if you weren't doing this, or just like you'd really like to be like doing like a radio show? I'd really love to do a radio show. Um, that's kind of all I've ever really wanted to do since I was a little kid. Um, just to be on the radio. That and and I play music, as you know. Um, yeah, I was actually gonna bring that up next. <laughs> Yeah, we got a musician in here. Yeah. A lot, yeah, a lot of people don't, I don't think, know that you do music, Chris, and you're actually really good. So, like, do you plan on, like, posting any of your music or making it public or maybe plans for a second channel? Well, I do have the second channel, but everything is, like, hidden. <laughs> yeah, well, Why? yes. But are you going to make it I know, Griff. I've been asking that for forever. <laughs> I don't know. It's It's different. Like, I don't care. If someone goes into my interviews and they're like, you suck, like, I know, whatever. But, like, um, it, when you it don't comes, suck, <laughs> I'm going to reject that. I mean, maybe a little, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Y'all are seeing the real Channy today. <laughs> how unprofessional of me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I am, I am taking the Spider Man glass and the wine. <gasps> no. Yep. You would never do that to her. He would friend. never my liquid courage. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, stuff like that, man, you know. Well, let's see. You need to make your music public because it's really good. 100%. But for, <laughs> yeah, for sure. If you guys haven't heard it, I'll make him make some of it public soon. But how long have you been playing music, Chris, for people who don't know? Uh, I've been playing guitar since I was 12 and then keyboards and stuff like that sort of like went hand in hand i i would be in my room after school every day um playing prince records and then trying to figure out how to play them um and uh yeah so like and now um it's like drum machines and 
different, you know, synth sounds and, and, and all of this other stuff. And uh, I still play the guitar, but, like, I try to... I, I feel like I got too dependent on guitar. And um, I'm trying to, like, purposely stay away from it because it's, like, my go-to. It's, like, my, my security blanket. And um, now I'm, like trying other instruments first before I like throw a guitar on it. That's awesome. Although I got to say, um, I'm really enjoying the synth music, which is, I think the only, uh, been synth, but they're good. Thank you so much. I will, I'll tell you what right now, here's what we're going to do. I'm taking over as host for two seconds. Um, <laughs> hey, you can't pull rank. Yeah, I don't know if that's how this works, buddy. You're the interviewee. I'm executive producer. We're gonna cut right here <laughs> to a um to a video of one of my songs. This is called "I'm Hanging On," and I want you guys to listen to it and tell me what you think. Uh, Are you actually gonna play it in our video though? Because you should. Yeah, it's gonna be. Play oh, okay, good. All right. Then I, yeah. I've actually heard this one. It's I really liked it. I feel like I might have, but go ahead and play it for me. I'm I'm gonna play it in in the video. You will see it. Um, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna cut and then, yeah. believe in that well then griff i can't think of that one because i've listened to a lot of his off the top of my head so you start from here then because you you remember it sure. okay um i mean it's it was a really really vulnerable piece of music um being really moved the first time you showed it to me it felt like you were like showing me a diary entry well yeah um uh, when I wrote that song, um, I, I wrote one verse. I was really into like, I don't know if you know who Claro is. Um, um, no, I don't think I do. Sorry. Uh, she's She does like bedroom pop. She's really, really good. Um, but she has a song called Flaming Hot Cheetos. And it's... You know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's sorry. <laughs> it, oh, we're trying to have a moment, Shani. If you I, just I'm your sorry. <laughs> I thought he was going to get all serious with me and he was going to be like, it's called love for my soul. And he's like, it's called flaming hot Cheetos. <laughs> no, the song is called flaming hot Cheetos, but she only did that. For, um, it, it was a demo that she made. Right. Got it. Got and it. Okay. She called it flaming hot Cheetos and there's no real chorus. It's, it's really just like a verse. And I, wanted to do something like that and be very vulnerable and um 
a lot of people i don't know if they know this or not but um i i have kidney disease and um it's it's not great <laughs> um like so so i get sick quite a bit and i i was i was really going through it really really going through it and uh so i wrote that piece and i recorded it and it, it took about a day because there was like throwing up in between but like uh, uh but i got it done and it was dope do you draw on these like life experiences as like inspiration for the music yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of stuff that I put in to my music is is drawn from that, especially like the the sad stuff, like sad boy music. My friend Kate calls it sad boy music. <laughs> 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 uh, so a lot of that stuff. Well, what would you say your genre of music is for people who don't know? Sad boy funk. Sad, sad boy funk. Sad. Okay, we're gonna coin. We're gonna coin that term. Someone go and copyright that. Sad boy funk. Got it. That's what it is. <laughs> Griff's like on it. Got it. That makes it sound like I'm like always depressed. I'm not. It's just <laughs> <laughs> no, just your music. <laughs> no, just your music's depressing. I get all the sad out of me when I make the music. Basically, like Joy Division, right? So like. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's sad boys. You're a sad boy. Lots of sad boys. <laughs> so so many sad boys. <laughs> but then I write songs like happiness, um, which uh, Maya ASMR used in one of her videos. I saw that. That was really cool. Where it's it's all happy, and I was very stoned when I made that. So I was just in happy land. I mean, so the there's key- a reason why people think that weed's like the creative drug. Right. There's a key to happy boy music, and it's just giving Christopher not walk in a bunch of weed. <laughs> <laughs> How you do it, man? I mean, but I feel like that's for anyone. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> Just a life lesson for all you listeners out there. I love how most interviews are like, don't smoke weed, kids. And we're over here like, so weed, weed makes you happy. Yeah, weed <laughs> makes you happy. Ask us about hallucinogens. <laughs> Griff, get off the mic. <laughs> Put it down. <laughs> Walk away. <laughs> hey, kids, here, let's let's talk about shrooms. Oh, my goodness. We are. <laughs> all right. So this interview's done. All right. I'm Shannon, and this is the Dirty Dirty Show. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think we scandalized her. <laughs> I'm an I am a a family friendly ASMR channel, Chris. <laughs> hey kids. Cocaine. Vampire is, is family friendly. <laughs> oh my goodness. All the vacuuming. <laughs> oh, can I just tell one quick anecdote about um a coworker of mine? was horrified that one of my other coworkers had never tried cocaine before. And <laughs> oh my, what is this become? <laughs> and, and one of my other coworkers goes, well, hold on. It's like, you know, it's really dangerous. It can cause heart palpitations, but it's also awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just... so this has been the Dirty Nerdy Show. Thank you so much for... <laughs> Yeah, I'm Griff. Goodbye. <laughs> I, I would like to state uh, I don't do anything other than the weeds. Uh... Dangerous. Yeah, I think I think everyone knows we are actually all clean kids. We're clean boys. Oh, we, we're, we're, just, we're just making bad, dirty jokes, hence dirty, nerdy show. We are clean, sad boys. <laughs> clean, yeah. sad boys. All three of us. Yeah, I, I did the rehab thing. We're good now. <laughs> well since we're getting into chris going through rehab where do you see yourself in five years chris i'm gonna oh, steer God. this back into the interview lane here <laughs> probably back in rehab oh my goodness and now we're back off the train tracks oh my goodness <laughs> no um where do i see myself in five years um you want the true honest answer Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, I'm still alive. Uh, <laughs> um, that's okay. That was kind of a joke, but like. Well, I mean, 
I got you. It's kind of a joke, but also serious. Um, hopefully, yeah. I'm still alive. Um, and I'd like to turn this into a global brand. Um, you know, where people are like, hey, that's Christopher not walking over the Dirty Nerdy Show. He does the damn thing. And he really cares about the ASMR community and stuff like that. I liked that phrase. That's what we should get on a shirt for you. That's going to be your new tagline. He does the damn thing or do the damn thing. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I do too. So what would you say your biggest accomplishment has been, Chris? Um, breaking my steel rods that one time. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> no, not this story. <laughs> <laughs> We've all heard it, Chris. We've all already heard it. I need to start prefacing with your channel at the end of my questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh. The first interview i did with chris he told the steel rod story oh my goodness i i love okay i love the steel rod story but i it's so funny because i do hear it like i think once an interview which is hilarious <laughs> and every time i tell it in the show i'm like so i've never told this story before i've told it like a billion times like well yeah, I think we you, know. you have to keep your tradition you already mentioned it so go ahead i'll let you <laughs> go on tell oh. your story Okay. So I've never told this story before. So, <laughs> we've never heard this story before. So I've never told this story on air before. <laughs> so nice. There was this lady. She was a wonderful lady. She was a kind lady. I'm lying. She was a bitch. But like, <laughs> <laughs> she would fly down to see me and she lived out of state, right? Way too hot for me. Um, and we would do our thing and we would spend weekends together and it was nice, man. It was nice, man. I was doing the damn thing. Like I said before, like we're going to coin and put on shirts. I was doing the damn thing. I don't think that's what we meant when we said do the damn thing. <laughs> he, was, he was doing the damn thing, Griff. Okay. I was, Jeez. I was doing the damn thing. And then next thing I know, okay, feel something in my back and it goes whoosh and I said what? <laughs> what? <laughs> and, I, and I said what? <laughs> I didn't say what out loud I was very silent I was more I was, you were I, silent? I was, I was about to be like if I was having like sexual intercourse with someone and they said and I said what? <laughs> I would have been like what the fuck just happened? <laughs> so we was doing the thing. I said, what? And then, and then I'm like, oh shit, something's going on in the back. Cause something went. Okay. <laughs> something's what going on in the back. <laughs> so, so next thing I know, I'm like, I got a split second to like make a decision here. Right. And as I have stated before, I am a cripple and I have to hold it down for my people. Okay. Not every cripple is going to get it like that all the time. I'm aware of this as I haven't done it in about three or four years. So I am very much aware that it's a rare thing to get up in there. So I was up in there. I was not going to waste my opportunity. Understand that right now. Okay. So, <laughs> so we, I wait till we're done. And instead of saying, that is amazing. You're beautiful. This is amazing. You're so amazing. Marry me. I didn't say none of that. Shit. You're so amazing. Amazing. A million times amazing. I didn't say none of that, right? <laughs> I didn't even offer her a sandwich or nothing. I was like, yo, we should probably go to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you want to hear after sex. Listen, you, you know, it was great. I need to go to the hospital. I, I mean, it's my favorite it aftercare. Great. I didn't even tell her it was great. I was just like, hey, we should probably wow, go to Wow, you hospital. just left her hanging like that. Rude. Yeah. Turns out that's not what a woman wants to hear. My bad, son. 
<laughs> my, my bad. So we go up in there, right? And my, mom, my mom's like a good old Christian lady, right? So I didn't want her to know what I had been doing, acting a damn fool, right? So we go, they do the x-rays, and they're like, hey, man, you broke some steel rods, you know? But first they asked me what I, how, how it happened. And I was like, oh, we was cleaning, and... uh cleaning we, cleaning we was cleaning. cleaning my dick and my, <laughs> 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 we was cleaning and now my back hurt man and i need x-ray yo and the, and they knew you were lying but they rolled with it exactly exactly they always know when you're lying <laughs> so i go and get the x-ray right and dude's like hey man you broke some steel rides we're going to have to cut them out um, you know, you know, surgery, whatever. And, but it, 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 like, it's not anywhere where you're like in like immediate danger. So they schedule it for like a week later. She flies back to where she lives. Thank God. <laughs> wow. You flew her out to you. Homie, I do it big. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> she, she paid for it. Um, but, like, <laughs> uh, uh, she she goes back and um I go and have the surgery. And anytime a nurse came in and she was like attractive and shit, I'd be like, yo, check the chart. <laughs> and ask me how that shit happened. <laughs> That's his new pickup line now. Uh, you know, I'm so good I broke some steel rods in my back. Yeah. It won't be great for you, but it'll be fantastic for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Fucking nailed it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, thank you for telling that story. We are hearing for the first time ever. First time ever on Dirty Nerdy. Exactly. <laughs> and you know what? If you stick around, you might just hear it for the first time again. You might. It depends. Yeah, he's never told the story before on air. Never, never in the entire three years of the show have I ever told that story. Well, besides <laughs> planning on breaking steel rods in your back, Chris, do you have any other special <laughs> videos or events planned coming up in the near future? Asking that kitten is coming on the show. She is an OG. Oh, yay. Yep, she's part of my tingle force. <laughs> oh, I don't know what that means. We, we do a D&D &D, um, podcast once, like a once a month, and she's part of the ASM artists on there. I love her. What? I had no idea. That's awesome. Yeah, I'll have to send a link somewhere. <laughs> Please do. But go on, Chris. You have ASMR Kitten coming on next. Yeah, well, yeah, this month we're recording it, uh, and it's going to go up, and it's going to be beautiful, and yeah, uh, I haven't really announced that, so this is the first time I'm announcing that. Um, Yay, it feels special. Here is your first. <laughs> I was super scared to contact her. By the way, I get super scared to contact people. Um, like, I get so, so, so scared. Like, I'm like- What are you, uh, what are you afraid of? Okay, so um, without going into too much detail, in the back of my mind, I'm like, okay, who hates me? Because there was a, someone before who used to do interviews that doesn't do interviews now, and uh, my name got pulled into it, and like it, it, it was messy, right? So um, in my mind, everyone hates me. So <laughs> I'm like, who hates me? Who doesn't? So I'm scared to like talk to anybody. And... Um, she was super nice and she agreed to come on the show and it was amazing. Oh, that's awesome. That's, um, yeah. I think that'll be a fun one. She's super chill. Yeah. Well, moving right along here, I did, I saw that you tweeted out that you wanted the viewers to ask you some of their lingering questions that they've been wanting to ask you for a while now. So I went ahead and I wrote some of those down. Do you have, or do you care if we go over your viewer questions? Let's do it. All, All right. right. The first one here is they asked a few different ones. It's actually all part of the same question, but what is your favorite TV show? Favorite TV show all time Chuck. I don't know what that is. Oh, it's uh it's cute. Is it? it what is it on like Netflix? 
It was on NBC. I don't know where it's streaming now. I think it might be what, on Netflix. What's it about, Chris, for people who don't know like me? If it's not on Netflix, it's definitely on Hulu. Um, it was a show about a dude who worked for, like, the nerd herd. So he was, like, a computer, like, fix-it dude, right? And they worked mm-hmm. at this place that was kind of like a... It was kind of like a ripoff of Best Buy. And um, he... Uh, ended up being a secret agent because he put on these glasses (laughs) and it put a computer into his brain and he had this like super burnt like computer in his brain and then he like had like the name of like every terrorist ever and he had to like go and like hunt them down and but he had like a handler and he was like terribly what he was like terrible (laughs) at like everything except for like when he would like flash and then like he would like be able to do like kung fu and shit yeah it's like if it's like if an every man got forced into the cia it's really funny that's funny i've never heard of it how have i never heard of that that sounds hilarious. i have no idea what is wrong with you shani Appa- apparently i don't watch <laughs> enough television your wife got canceled i'm so sorry don't hate me <laughs> was, all right this is the campaign before it got canceled for like the last like the second to last season they did where you, like if you ate like subway sandwiches it would like help save the show and that's hilarious i yeah. went to subway so much like <laughs> chris, oh. chris, chris single-handedly saved the show that day no, i'm just kidding <laughs> but yeah it had it had the guy that um you, you know the movie Shazam oh yeah it had that guy in it yeah it had Zachary Lee He's Chuck Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. All right. Well, they also ask moving along. Sorry, because I have a lot of questions from them. So I'm trying to get to them. He's, they also asked, what's your favorite video game? Favorite video game uh, all time? Uh, Red Alert. I don't... What's, uh, what's that one? Yeah. It's one of those strategy games, right? So think. Oh, yeah. I like those. Think of like, like Warcraft or something like that, right? Where it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's just complete strategy and you're in the military and uh my uncle got me into those games when i was a kid and i've i've loved those games ever since plus tim curry's in it uh oh (laughs) a plus a plus yeah all right what's your favorite animal i like cats i did not expect that one but i I do like cats too (laughs) really what did you guys think i was gonna say I don't know, something like a tiger. <laughs> no, I, lo- I love cats. Cats are so, like, calming. Oh, I love that. Oh, you have a sensitive side to you. He never would have guessed. Yeah, me either. <laughs> <laughs> and then what's your favorite food, Chris? Okay, I-, I looked at this question earlier, and I know who this is by. Hey, what up, Amy K? By the way, guys, please go subscribe to Amy K. She is so good. I freaking love her. Oh my god. She is <laughs> she does like Star Wars role plays and she looks like Natalie Portman and she's just ah she's so good. And I really yeah, she's cute. to go subscribe to her because ah she's gonna blow up someday and be like the biggest star ever and forget about all of us. But like she's so good. You guys yeah, anyways. Um favorite food. Uh fried pork chops fried okra potato salad baked beans you're a southern boy (laughs) yeah that's that's such a southern boy meal right there yeah it is i don't think i've ever had okra before what is is that like a plant yeah yes yeah yeah and then when you you fry it and bread it it's really really good oh i love things that are fried and breaded me too. It, my goodness. It's, it's really, really you can f- you can fry and bread anything, and I'll put it in my mouth. But I, <laughs> I mean, I wasn't going to go there. But <laughs> she is a right, let's see. woman. I am going to behave. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. All right. Do you prepare all of your questions, or do you just listen and go with the flow? Bit of both. Um. Sometimes I prepare. Uh, sometimes I'm dealing with like 
health things and I can't. Uh, so I, I, I go, you know, off the cuff, but I always make a point to go and watch people's content and at least get like an outline of like what I want to do. Like, um, for example, with the Amy K video, cause that, that just came out actually. Um, I think that was like the, the next, to. it wasn't the last video, but it was the video before as of recording this, the video before that, that we put out. Um, what I'll do is I'll go and I'll watch a bunch of the videos and then I'll like write down on like notepad, like things that I like liked and things that interest me or, or things that they say. It, one thing that really helps is if somebody has like a Q and a, uh, video, mm -hmm. I love those because I can go in and then, you know, learn more about them first. Yeah. And, and then, um, it's kind of like stalking in a way because like uh you watch that you, you learn about them and then you like write like things that you want to like expand on and then you go and you look at their instagram you see what they're into you look at what the kind of stuff they're tweeting about and liking on twitter um stuff like that and then you can sort of like formulate like where you can go with that interview because everyone's different you don't want to you don't want to be like, hey, girl, what up, what up, what up, with somebody that's not that vibe. Um, yeah. So every vibe is different. Yeah, that's kind of how I like to approach an interview, too. Like, I like to have a list of, like, questions just in case, like, it goes off topic or something. But typically, it's it's I feel like an interview is more... I don't know, easy to listen to if it's more of like a conversation. Exactly. At least oh, a review interview. Yeah. That's what, yeah, exactly. And uh, that's, that's the way I do it. And I, 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 I like doing it that way. It's just easier. All right. Well, I'm going to skip this next question because they literally just asked, do you prefer like deep conversation or free flow chaos, which I'm pretty sure we kind of just answered, but go ahead yeah. if you want to answer it. We'll just both. <laughs> yeah. Both. All right, so the next one was pick five artists to interview in a fireside chat interview, and you have to interview them all at the same time. Uh, oh. Okay, but is it people that I've already interviewed? I don't know. This is a user's question. I'm still going over Twitter questions. <laughs> That's all it says. <laughs> yeah, blame it on them. Because I, 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 yeah, I don't know. I've kind of interviewed everybody, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, pick, if you had to do it again, pick five that you liked, or I don't know, just pick five people. <laughs> Chris, um, don't don't ruin don't ruin the Twitter questions, Chris. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma um, yeah. I, um, Danny, I I think the five I would pick one I want to pick AS Markelow because I think she's uh, fantastic at what she does and. Uh, I, I think that she's just remarkable. Um, another person that I would I would probably pick would be uh, Heather Feather. Just be, oh yeah, just to be like, uh, hey girl, where you been? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, another one, another one. Okay, there's um. Why is her name uh, Lilium? The one Lilium. Um, she's one of the first people I ever watched, and I I really really love like what she does, and she's you know like at like the the she's like the top for me. Um, let's see, I I gotta I gotta do two more. God dang it! Oh my god, this is so hard. This is the hardest thing. Shani, definitely one of them. And I'm not just fucking kissing your ass, okay? Because uh -huh. <laughs> here's the thing about my girl Shani, okay? Okay. <laughs> I, have, I swear to God, if you cry, I'm going to laugh at you. Um, I, 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 you know, I'm... I, I know you are. You're definitely, I... you're definitely a crier. Uh, I am. I have been friends with Shani since she basically started. And uh, it's it's super cool because she's one of those people that's um, definitely on the rise. Aww. Becoming like one of those top tier talents. And I want to 
put her in there because I think she's in that conversation. Um, she's, she, I, 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 I've said this on the show before, but it, I know you don't freaking listen to every interview I do, so I'm going to say it again. Oh, that's not true. I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, you fucking don't. Uh, <laughs> uh, Shani is the kindest, sweetest, like, not big-headed person in the world. Like, there isn't an ounce of ego in this woman at all. Um, I'm not crying. <laughs> <laughs> um, she she she's one of the people that means the absolute world to me um i don't like i said I don't, I don't trust too many people with my kingdom but i trust her and the reason is because she's just such a good person and she's so good at what she does like if you um are if you're here for me which i doubt if you're, you're here you're probably here because shani's here um, oh stop! <laughs> but if you're if you're here for me, uh, go watch Shani. She's freaking th- the best, and she's only getting better. Like every video she puts out, it's better than the last one. It's it, the the editing, the 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 lighting, the 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 little details that you don't think about. I promise you, she sits there and obsesses about for hours. Oh, I'm going to start crying. This interview is about you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's definitely clear how thoughtful you are about all of your work. I totally agree with Chris. Oh, damn it, you guys. Now I'm going to have to go cry and Griff's going to have to take over now. <laughs> that was my plan all along. <laughs> right. You guys had this set up. Damn it. <laughs> But, uh, okay well next time you interview me i'm just going to use my whole interview to talk about how amazing you are and how great your music is and how hot griff is damn it <laughs> <laughs> that's weird bro she's like my sister that's... <laughs> whatever that girl is hot you guys can't see her but she hot <laughs> I am, oh i am blushing i am a <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry you just have a hot sister i don't know what to tell you i can't help it i am, I am so uncomfortable no no i'm sorry <laughs> i love the crazy turns that this interview is taking oh my goodness all right let's see you have one last question from the twitter verse and it is do you have any routines you like to go do or what you like to do when you get ready for interviews i smoke the giantest bowl oh my goodness <laughs> <laughs> is that a word we should have seen that Griff? yeah we should have seen that one coming that, that's a word, yeah right? like i don't even know why you asked um <laughs> I, I smoke the biggest bowl and no I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be serious uh although that is totally part of it um <laughs> Griff is like the TVNS like director. She's behind the scenes and he's like, is giantist a word? <laughs> I don't know, Chris, have some more weed. <laughs> she like hands you a joint. Just keep doing your job. <laughs> I'm not doing mine if I'm not enabling him. Um, exactly. Uh, but no, um, so research, definitely. Uh, that's that's the most important thing research um, getting a good vibe um, of of who you're interviewing um, it, and that requires like it, talking to them beforehand um, one thing that you want to do is you want to get the person as comfortable as possible um, so whether that means like talking to them a little bit before the interview to get them nice and comfortable to show them that hey you're not here to like be a creep or whatever um you know give them an idea of like where you're going because they're sort of like stepping into your world and that's really fucking scary to like hand someone else the the keys like trust me i'm in that right now and i'm fucking terrified um so making sure they're comfortable doing your research um 
being uh, as flexible as possible because it's um, their time that they're offering to you and uh, their time is valuable. So respect that. Uh, and I think those really are the keys. Uh, I, I try to observe all of those things when when approaching interviews. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think a lot of people know this, but I really like it. So if anyone ever gets like a message that's listening to this about one of us asking if you want to do an interview, Chris is really good about talking to you like an out for like an hour, like 30 minutes or whatever you need before the interview to make it more comfortable. And if you start doing the interview with him and all of a sudden you're just like anxiety ridden or uncomfortable comfortable, he'll pause the freaking interview and come back to you like when you're ready. So Chris is really great at accommodating people on the show. And I really liked that when I did my interview with him. Aww. Yeah. I expect nothing less from my brother. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, Griff, we've come to the end of my Twitterverse questions. Do you have any questions for Chris? Um, you know, I had some, but I just kept crossing them off as we, as we covered them. Um, but I guess my last one I have is what is your favorite thing about the ASMR community? Um, this, well, I've, I've been spending a lot of time in the Twitch ASMR community lately. Um, because it, it sort of magnifies what I love about the ASMR community and mm -hmm. what I love is this sense of com camaraderie like yeah there are people that are very clickish that's everywhere you're always going to find that but like um there are also the wonderful wonderful people who will help anyone there are um small channels that they, they get so scared they're like do i need the 3do do i need this and uh, they can always go to literally anybody who's a little bit bigger and everyone takes the time to be like well most people take the time to be like no you, you don't need this maybe you do need this uh this is how you do lighting uh this is chroma key uh here this will help you with chroma key things like that um everyone helps everyone and i love that everyone is so incredibly like just kind and helpful and been welcoming to me and i don't really i think i don't think i deserve it because i don't make asmr but for some reason some of you like me and you you let <laughs> of course we like you fuck uh, off i mean he's all right <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah some people like me and that's that's cool well, <laughs> Chris, we love you. If the, if your fans, um, if your fans or any supporters out there want to, you know, find a way to help support you or find a way to like, you know, look you up or reach out to you or anything like that, why don't you tell the people where they can find you? Oh well, they can find me at Chris Not Walking on Twitter, um, at Christopher Not Walking on Instagram. Although I'm never on Instagram unless I'm over there, like looking at thirst traps and like tapping the like button. Oh my goodness. And an asshole to me in the comment <laughs> section. <laughs> I love how, I love how he owns up to it though. I'm only over there for thirst traps. And <laughs> oh. I mean, I think we've established his whole life. He's only anywhere for thirst traps. I, oh my goodness. I also, I also like to go to Griff's Instagram and then troll the shit out of her. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of my favorite thing, but, uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, let's see what else, uh, teespring.com, uh, link will be down below. Um, we have new merch that it looks pretty dope. Yeah. My friend, um, Kate helped me design it. Uh, she does ASMR on Twitch because I've been, like I said before, I've been expanding into the Twitch verse cause I want to get to know how they approach things and how they do it and what the difference is you know um is 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 the feeling different when it's a live thing where you get like instant feedback and you get this sense of community that's a bit more intense uh because it's 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 live and you you speak to everyone and i i really like that 
and I want to know the difference between that and like doing you know the the thing on on YouTube where I feel like there's a bit of a wall there, and that's that's not a knock on anyone that does. Yeah, ASMR on YouTube because I'm on YouTube but uh I, there's there's a wall there you know and uh there's less of a wall uh on Twitch and I really like that and I really want to dive into that and pick people's brains and see how it works yeah that's awesome actually I've been wanting to reach out and start doing more Twitch stuff as well so maybe I'll pick your brain afterwards as well <laughs> Get on it. All Jerry right, does Chris. Cool. Um, she does these. She plays like horror video games on Twitch, and it's always fun to watch her get freaked out. Oh my gosh! I don't know if it's fun. It's so funny because people come oh, on there thinking I'm fine. doing ASMR, and then I scream into their ears. <laughs> it's so Let fun, me put though. it this way: it's fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun for you to watch my, my misery. <laughs> Yes, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> you guys don't understand. All right, before we wrap, I got to say this. Okay, so when Shani does the Twitch, you guys, I'm putting you on blast right now. Deal with it. Um, oh, my goodness. <laughs> if she plays a horror game, y'all y'all don't understand. Y'all think Shani, she does, like, the the, the, the scary, like, like uh, ASMR videos. Nah, this girl is a fucking chicken shit. Okay, listen. <laughs> Straight up, we did Five Nights at Freddy's one night. She was about to cry, son. Okay. <laughs> like... <laughs> I saw her playing out last one time. It wasn't pretty, but it was fun <laughs> for me. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The Five Nights at Freddy's one, I totally forgot about that. I'm very drunk, too. And, oh, my goodness, that just did not end well. <laughs> I hope it's in the VODs. It's in the VODs, right? I, I think it is, but if not, there are gifs of it spiraling on Twitter somewhere because someone has tweeted me gifs of me just screaming, and I'm like, oh my goodness, that is embarrassing. <laughs> oh, I need, I need, I need one of these gifs. I'll, I'll... Yeah, actually, th <laughs> I think it's Odd Job in my Discord. He's got them. You'd have to message him. <laughs> Ooh, I'm gonna find him. I'm going to find it. I'm gonna find it, and I'm probably gonna put it in this video. You guys, two debates here. First, Tobey Maguire, great Peter Parker, bad Spider-Man. Andrew Garfield, great Spider-Man, bad Peter Parker. Tom Holland, great Peter Parker and Spider-Man. Now let's have real talk, real talk. <laughs> okay, real <laughs> Chris Nepper, we bonded. You supported me. Where's GP? He's my mod. GP, you're the witness. I love you, GP. <laughs> As I was saying, I love GP. I died. Please don't. It's not even a pretty face, guys. Like, I literally, like, my jaw looks like it unhinged and dropped down okay, to well, my chest. definitely put that in the video, then. <laughs> I literally look like my jaw is down touching my boobs. Like, that's how much my mouth, like, opened up. It was insane. And this gift more. <laughs> What about oh my you guys? Goodness. Where can the people find you? Not you, Griff. You don't give anything out. Well, they can I... find me in hell because I'm not on social media. <laughs> and that's a wrap. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, that's the best answer. I meant Shani. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. So I won't be with Griff. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I like how Griff's like, I'm not on social media, but meanwhile, 10 minutes ago, I'm like, so I totally troll her. <laughs> on Instagram, right? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. You guys can find me at um, youtube.com slash ASMR Shani or Twitter and Instagram are ASMR Shani as well because I am not a creative bitch. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, you're consistent. You're a consistent bitch. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I like simplicity, damn it. <laughs> it's all about the branding, man. You got to have like the same everywhere. Yeah. Right. But I could have had a cool ASMR name and I was like, I'll just be ASMR, I don't know, Shani, because that's my name. <laughs> <laughs> You could have been. Her, like, I mean, GB's already taken, so what else is there? Right, but GB can't be her real name. 
It's so what is it that. really? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, it might be. And if it is, you know, that's super cool and so, unique, you know, but it's got to be short name, for something. Her real name is Gibby, but she only goes by GB. And oh, right, right, right. She didn't want to be associated with Gibby for my Carly. So it's GB. I know the answer and I'm not allowed to say, God damn it. <laughs> See, I knew it. I knew he knew the dirty details that he wasn't giving me. Damn it, Chris. God damn it. Fucking. Anyways, this has been really fun. Thank you so much for letting us interview you. Yeah, Chris, this has been actually really cool. And I'm glad that other people get to see a side of you that they haven't. Yeah, man. Um, (laughs) Stay tuned for the next one, because in the next one, there's going to be some dopeness. And you guys are going to be like, what? And I'm going to be like, yeah. And it's going to be fire. (laughs) If you guys want to make sure that you get notified about that video, just subscribe to the channel and give that little bell a ring. And make sure you like this video and leave a comment below about telling Chris how awesome he is, okay? I need some more because I'm thirsty. Not that kind of thirsty. Don't even say it. Out. That is a lie. My thirst is not unquenchable. (laughs) Thanks so much, guys. Bye. And bye. Spend the night at home, watching on our phone, all those videos I